Hey, what's going on, my people? This is Living Well with Darrell. I'm glad you uh, tune in today. And uh, this is just a part of a Living Well with Darrell moment, you know, where I talk about the word, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm here because of the word. And the word is actually what brought me to this moment in my life where you actually getting to understand a little bit about Living Well with Darrell. I grew up in a small town, um, South Georgia, called Baxley, Georgia. And I was um, raised with my parents, both parents, and uh, my sister, and my brother, my cousins, and all of us was close knit growing up. We all grew up in a kind of like in a community where we live really like across the street from each other. My grandparents stayed across the street from me, and uh, family members, a lot of family members lived in the city, in the town. So I was always around family growing up. You couldn't do nothing in our town without our parents knowing about it. Um, before I got home, they knew about it. And so in that, you know, you try to find yourself in a place of, you know, trying to do things and see could you do it without them knowing. And it never worked really. Um, even though, you know, as a child, I rebelled a lot, you know, for uh, trying to do a little mischievous type stuff as a kid would do. Nevertheless, my dad was there, my parents, my mom, uh, they always wanted the best for me. Sometimes what happened growing up like in a middle class, I guess you can call it middle class, lower middle class society. And, you know, being in the country in a small rural town, you know, you get a lot of um, resistance in life. You know, seeing the uh, spirit of poverty, seeing being in a place where, you know, you see wealth, but you don't really experience it with uh, the monetary type things. And everybody want money, you know, but at the same time, we were rich in relationships to be able to grow up in a community that loved us and a community that showed us that there was a better way in life. The community that was built upon the principles of the Bible and um I grew up Baptist, you know, so it was really good. I, I learned a lot through the Baptist faith and believing, you know, and then I realized that, you know, there was a lot of things in, that I had learned and seen that shaped my life uh, being Baptist, being um, in that particular uh, environment as a Baptist. And I used to hear them always talk about a relationship opposed to being a uh, uh, a person of religion, you know, have a relationship with God. And so my relationship with God was focused on, you know, going to church. Man, we would be at church probably about a couple times out of the week, you know, Wednesday night Bible study. Shout out to Reverend Kaysen. Uh We had a uh, rap session, you know, on Wednesday, which was really good for the kids. You know, we were all growing up, so we were seeing, um, a lot of stuff on BET has, has started coming out. When I first grew up, we didn't have BET. We didn't have MTV. We didn't even have a, a black own or a black station to really listen to. So we listened to a lot of country music. We listened to uh, a lot of gospel music, you know. Uh, you know, they had stuff on there back in the day, you know, that we listened to. Um, you know, uh, uh, a lot of the country singers, I, I listened to, so me and my cousin, you know, we all of us, we was really close. So me and the boys, all of the boys did a lot of stuff and the girls were uh, with us as well. Some of the times we was actually in the country doing um, like uh, working in the fields. Like we grew up working, we had a little plot of land where we farmed and we made a garden pretty much. We didn't have cattle and, you know, animals, but we had a garden. so. We started working in our garden as kids and from there you know it was kind of it's hard work because a lot of times my friends they were out playing on um, you know fridays we get out of school we go to the garden to work pull weeds you know um started cropping tobacco when i was like nine years old and from there you know sucking tobacco taking the, the uh, suckers out of the back of the spring of the year which is coming up and from there we were um 
you know, prepare, you know, the racks and stuff and get everything ready for, at the barn and um, get out into the fields. And we would, you know, do like 150 uh, to 125 barn rack, sometimes a 200 barn rack. And some of the racks will weigh like a couple hundred pounds just because it got tobacco in it that's green. And so you got to pack the racks in order for it to make it, you know, weigh so they can get the money when they're taking it to the uh, barn and, and cook it out so it'd be a pretty full rack when they make the sheets and at that time they was paying me and my cousin you know like three dollars a day you know uh, we were young nine years old walking the back of down to get the pack it in more and it was really you know um a time in my life where i really had fun and at the same time i had resistance because i didn't really want to get up every morning at five o'clock to go to work um so it got better as I got older because we made a game out of it. We would wrestle and we would do all kinds of things like that. So um, had a lot of people that were, you know, using uh, illegal substance, uh, working with us. You know, generally that's what you find in, you know, in your uh, manual labors in the field. You know, your field workers are usually um, been abusing some kind of substance for some years and now they resort to uh, doing that type of work not because they're bad people because they made bad decisions so a lot of times me and my um cousins uh, we would you know take their place because we were in our right minds young and ready to uh, work so it was really interesting as our uh friends began to get involved we began to make a game out of working. We had a uh, one guy came up with a song with us, and you know, we were all starting to to get along and get along better with guys who were in the uh, community because they kind of came along and seen what kind of work we were doing. They we got up to where we would make like twenty five dollars a day, which was a lot of money to us, you know. And we work five days a week, sometimes six. Um, it all depends. And from there, you know, you make you. You know, you make $125 a week, you got to pay your own school clothes and stuff like that. So it was really good teaching us responsibility, you know, from a different standpoint and also how to do manual labor. There's a rhythm in life. You know, I learned um, through um, living down in South Georgia, there's a rhythm in life. And sometimes things are out of rhythm and you wondering what's happening because you're out of rhythm. You got to touch with God. And that, that is the center that holds everything. The earth turns every day. The, as a matter of fact, as you're looking at this, the earth is turning. The sun is re moving, revolving uh, around the earth. And the earth is uh, actually, the season is changing. So as we get ready to prepare, you know, in the winter for that, you know, spring season, you know, you have to ask yourself, what is it that I can do? And this time and this spring that I didn't do last year to get the results I was looking for. Some have died. A lot of people have died this year and last year, you know, whether it was COVID or other illnesses, you know. So you got people who are in your corner, in your circle, who are not here this year. So I'm asking you, you know, what is it that you want out of life? Because you may not have that accountability anymore. God has still called you for a plan and a purpose. I was reading this morning about uh, Joseph. And it said in the beginning of Genesis, the 37th chapter, where Jacob was in a land in a, of strangers where his father's was not known. But he had a son in which was of his old age by the name of Joseph, whom he loved. And because he was in this old age, see, when people think they're old, that they're not supposed to still produce. But that goes to show me that when we get old, we are still supposed to produce. You may not be reproducing children, but you're still supposed to produce in the earth. And Jacob loved Joseph because it was something he had produced in his old age. I might be talking to somebody here. You may be in an older age and you need to produce. You need somebody to tell you that you still can produce. Regardless of what it looks like, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what people have said to you, you still can produce. I'm talking to somebody on here. I wouldn't stop across that. And so when you begin to look in this spring 
Ask yourself, what is it that you want to produce? You may not even consider yourself old. You may not consider yourself uh, older than some of those that are around you. You may feel like you're still young, but you still haven't produced or got the results that you was looking for from last year. See, the only thing that it says a man is insane about is someone who keep doing the same thing and looking for the different results. You got to do something different in order to get a different results. And you got to do something lining up toward the goal that you want. And you got to be able to write that vision down and make it plain. So he that read it may be able to run with it this year in 2021. That meaning that you may have to sit down in a quiet place, somewhere where you can actually think, somewhere where you can get your thoughts together. I don't care if it's in the bathroom. I don't care if you have to do it, you know, in your closet. But wherever you have to do it, that library is not open. So you got to go somewhere where you can sit down and write down what you want. Tell a guy because, see, the enemy can't read. Say that again. The enemy can't read. How do you know? Because Jesus had to tell him it is written. So, therefore, if you write it down, the enemy can't read it. <laughs> but check this out. The word had to be spoken because life and death is in the power of tongue. It's not in the reading. But the understanding was in the written. That's how Jesus could say the written and the devil had to back up because he understood what he was reading. And if you're not understanding the written, then you got the Holy Spirit, which is inside of you, that will help you to understand the, the written, the, the Lagos part of the word. And so when we get into that, the understanding that this word has power, we call that dunamis. It has power. The, the name of Jesus Christ has power. Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose, the anointing and his anointing, the power of God will be able to help you to overcome this here 2021. Now, people think that's because we changed the presidents that that's going to change their circumstance or, or situation. Well, it won't change it unless you change it. If you still got that same way of thinking in this 2021, you will have that same result of 2020. I'm talking to somebody here because the Bible said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. It's not for the lack of faith. See, I'm actually right here and I believe that I'm talking to somebody now. And I might be even ministering to myself because sometimes when you hear somebody ministering, they're not just ministering to you, but the Holy Spirit is ministering to them so they can get down deeper. You need to keep hearing the word of God. That's the only way your faith can grow unless you hear the word of God. Not your thoughts, but the word of God. A lot of times we sit around and we just listen to what is going on into our ears. And the enemy is talking to you and you got to tell him to hush your mouth because God has a plan and a purpose for me and all things work together for my good so if you're not actually lining up with that then you need to ask yourself how can i line up with the word of god and what the word of god say for me because there is a time and this is the season that god is saying i am calling my people higher i have put you in on, 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 on homeschool you no longer at the church i got to homeschool you on this some of y'all have changed your whole way of life because God is saying, I'm homeschooling you. I got to homeschool you. I was letting you go to church, but you was going to church out of duty. You wasn't going to church out of love. You wasn't going and fellowshipping with the people at church. You was going to let people see what you were wearing. And God is saying, I'm bringing people out of that now. And I got you homeschooled where you can sit in your gown and you can sit with your uh, shorts on and being able to understand that God is doing a new thing. <coughs> Sometimes God got to sit us down to readjust our thinking. Paul said, renew our minds daily. And I don't think that we renew our minds enough to be able 
to say that we're still doing the things of God when we're still allowing the little small foxes to spoil the vine. For instance, you sit there and watch somebody curse somebody and you sit there and, and, and agree with the cursing because you felt like they should have got cursed out too. That's not God. You know somebody is uh, messing around on their significant other, but you won't tell you anything. You won't even go to God and pray for that person. That's not God. You allow somebody to continue to go down and fall down and you will kick them down while they're down. That's not God. God said, I got to homeschool you now. God said, I got to homeschool you to let you know that you may be in a strange place, but I'm still God and I'm still calling you into a new place, into a new season. And in this season, you will see that the hand of God was in our lives and on our lives as we traveled through 2020 to 2021. If we could look back just a few months ago, but all kind of evilness broke loose. And we were trying to use that as our uh, truth. See, a lot of people saying my truth, but the truth is the word of God. See, the word of God said heaven and earth were passed away. You know, the rocks will cry out, but not one word of God will actually fall away. It won't. And I'm not going to sit here and let no rocks cry out while I'm still here. I got the word. And to you, my beloved, I'm telling you, God is wanting to use you in this time and this season. So, and I was reading where Joseph was beloved by his dad. And his dad was saying, I love Joseph. I'm going to make this coat for him. And he made this coat, but his brothers hated him. He came to his dad even before they ever even got the coat with the evil report about his brothers. Who have you went on with the evil report about? See, there's an evil report that even though you're a Christian, you're talking about people. You're gossiping about people. You're talking and saying certain things about them that you know you shouldn't be saying. But I'm telling you today, you can go to God and ask for repentance. So we got to keep a repentance heart in this season. We got to have a heart that's pliable, a, a heart that's saying, God, help me in my shortcomings because we all got shortcomings. But God, give me the wisdom and the knowledge that I need to be able to show your love and your kindness because there are a lot of people who are waiting to see the sons of God rise up. There are a lot of people that are waiting to see the sons of God rise up. This is the time and this is the season for the sons of God. And when I say sons of God, because that's what the word says. It's not a sexual or anything of that nature or dominance, but the sons of God, what God calls the sons of God, those who are doing his will on earth. You may be a woman and you a woman of God and you're doing all that God has called you to do. But I tell you one thing, my beloved there's a room that we all can get in and this is called the room of improvement that's why paul said i put those things in the past behind me because why because those things in the past could be the things that's holding him back and you got to stretch towards the mark of the higher calling you can't stretch towards what people are saying you can't stretch towards your feelings because your feelings will mislead you your feelings will misguide you your feelings will have you out of place because they are feelings. That's what they're called, feelings. They will have you in emotional depression because they are called feelings. But you got to press in this season. And I'm telling you to press because it won't come easy. The word of God says that we must put those things behind us and press towards the mark of the higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. My beloved, it's not in yoga. My beloved, it's not in those things that you're seeing sitting around with those statues. It's not It's not into that, but it's in the grace of God. God loved you so much and he loved me so much that he sent his only son and his son, his name is Jesus and his son died and rose for us and he is saying, come home. Come home and get an understanding of who you are. See, Joseph had a coat of many colors. And you may not have a coat of many colors, but you may have a closet 
of many colorful things. And God is saying the significance on that is the, his brothers and everybody who saw him, they knew who he was before he ever got to him. They knew that he was favored by his dad, Jacob. They knew that he was Jacob's favorite. They knew that he was blessed by Jacob. They knew because Jacob's name was already in the land. So as we, I looked on down into it, there was an anointing. And I'm going to speak this. This has got to be an anointing on your life this year. You got to have this anointing to be able to accomplish great things. So Joseph began to go and take his father's flock. And he was out with his father's flock. And his brothers left to go to Shechem. And in this time, as he was, they were there, he came to his father and said, his father said, I need you to go down to your brothers and take some food down to them. And he went. And when he got to the first place, he did not see them. And the man said, they have left. So he had to keep going, but they saw him coming from a distance. And they said, here come this dreamer. Now, if you was to go back a little bit and look up, you'll see that they said that because he had told them in a dream that his sheaves was actually standing up amongst theirs and theirs bowed down to him. And, and Jacob, he told him also, and Jacob rebuked him because he didn't believe what he was saying was true. Sometimes somebody ain't going to believe every time what you're saying is true. Everybody's not going to understand what God is showing you in this season. So you're going to have to move sometimes by yourself. Uh, they used to have a song said, I will go if I have to go all by myself. Now, I'm going to tell you, sometimes you will stand alone, but know that you're not alone. Because God said, I will, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So here it is. Joseph is going down and his brothers already saw him before he got there. And they are already upset with him. Beloved, let me tell you something. People see you coming because you're anointed. People see the anointing of God on you. And they are already jealous because of the anointing. See, but the anointing cannot be hid. You can't take the light and put it under the bed and have it on. And not nobody see it. Some of y'all already know. You have your phone on at night and your wife or your husband in the bed. And you're trying to look at it to see who done text you. And the light wake them up. So you know that you can't take no light and hide it and be in darkness. It's going to be the smallest light will be seen in darkness. That's why I'm here today, because the smallest light I want you to be able to see, you need to come on home. God got something great for you in this season, in this time. Even though people see you coming this week as you're getting ready to go about your week, God already done planned a purpose for your life. He already have it in place for you this week, but you got to receive what God has already done. If you don't never receive anything from God, know this. God will still have his hands out waiting for you to receive. He's not like man where he would take his hand back because you didn't receive it on the first time. He is here again calling out saying, my beloved, I wish you come home. I wish you come home and understand that I have a plan and a purpose for your life. So Joseph brothers wanted to kill him. And his brother Reuben has said, now nah, let us not put our hands on him. Let us uh, put him in his pit. And in his pit, he began to see that there wasn't no water or anything happening in that pit. So they put him down in that pit. And as they began to walk and talk, they began to talk to each other. And Joseph was brought up by some other people as his brothers were gone. His brothers didn't know he wasn't there. And when they got back, they seen that his coat was the only thing that they had because Joseph was gone. They had took the coat. So they went and killed a, a goat to, uh, to make sure to put some blood on it to give it to their father and say that some wild beast must have killed him. So Jacob began to believe that he was dead and he began to grieve. See, let me show you something. When the lie came on the scene, false evidence appearing real. See, they lied to you and told you that you were not good enough. They lied and told you that you were not able to, to do great things. They lied and told you because the color of your skin, people going to treat you in a different way. They lied and told you because the color of your skin, 
you were limited in what you was able to do. See, let me tell you something. This is false evidence appearing real. It's not because of the color of your skin, but because of the decisions that you have that you can actually be able to overcome anything. You can overcome anything. And ain't nobody told you that because the color of your skin ain't gonna stop you from achieving your goal. Let me share something with you. You can look in, 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 in life and look back down through history. There have been problems because of the color of our skin, but it has never stopped us to this day. You're able to use restrooms with other colored people today because somebody came before you. And see, when you have success and you ain't done nothing for it, that means somebody either paid the price before you or somebody's still paying the price right now before you. And so you can look at, we got athletes in all fields of sports, entertainment, and it ain't because of the color of their skin, because of what they believe. They believe that they were able to be I ain't going to say there wasn't some that had to pay the price. There always going to be somebody got to pay the price. And Jesus paid that price for you and for me. That we may be able to have the right to eternal life. And so you can accept him, my beloved. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper." Because wholeness and completeness is what God wanted for man. He never wanted anything else besides that for man. And he didn't have no color, but he had man as being being, being a human being, a man. That means the actual uh, being. That means male and female. Man. Uh, there's a lot of things that's going on in the world that are actually making men as feel as if they're less than. But I stopped by to tell you, man, and one man, that you are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You must not give up caving and quitting this time. There are a lot of dark days ahead, but be encouraged. God is still faithful. God is still sitting on the throne. Just like God was with Joseph when he was in the pit. And they picked him up out of the pit and they carried him to Egypt. And Egypt means slave or slavery. And they took him there. And Potiphar has seen that there was a blessing on Joseph. So he made him over everything. And everything that Joseph was owed was blessed. There's a anointing, the Joseph anointing. And I want to speak that over your life in 2021. I speak the Joseph anointing over your life. Everything that you're over, if you're a child of God, it will be blessed. I speak the creative anointing over your life that you will have the ability to create because you was created and made in God's image and likeness. The word create means baraha in the Hebrew. You are able to create. I declare you will be able to do great things regardless of what the social media say regardless of what the internet may say, regardless of what the actual circumstance may say, regardless of what the news may say, regardless of what your mama and daddy said. I speak the word of God of your life. You will have that Joseph of anointing, that anointing that will be able to make you be able to come up. You will begin to see that job that you've been waiting on. You will get that job and you will have an anointing to do that job that nobody else was able to do it like you have done it because I spoke this anointing of you. And I declare and decree that it shall come to pass that you will be able to do great things this year. Beloved, and because of that, you will give God all the praise and the glory. Be it now unto you, according to God's word, in Jesus' name we pray. And I thank you for tuning in. And always remember this. Keep the faith. No matter what it looked like, keep the faith. No matter how you feel, keep the faith. No matter what they say, keep the faith. Keep moving.